Sure, we all secretly long for death, but when it comes to characters in TV shows, you'd imagine actors who get paid to play them would be hoping they stick around as long as possible. Yet as much as multi-season contracts are surely what most actors' dreams are made of, sometimes performers have different ideas about their careers and will eventually ask the showrunner to write them out, typically by way of an impactful death scene. It might sound crazy, but you have to respect an artist for believing in themselves and their judgement enough to turn down lucrative TV money and roles that could have potentially gone on for many more years. So with that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 actors who begged for their TV characters to die. Number 10, Adewale Akinoye Agbaji, Lost. Though Adewale made a name for himself on HBO's prison drama Oz, he truly joined the big leaves when he took the role of Lost's Mr. Echo, a survivor from the tail section of Oceanic Airlines Flight 815. Adewale initially had to be convinced to take the role by the creators of the show, but after working on the show for a year, the actor decided he wanted to move back to London, citing discomfort living in Hawaii alongside the recent deaths of his parents. The showrunners were naturally disappointed with his request to be killed off, but put their heads together to find a way for him to make an exit early in Lost's third season. In the end, Echo ends up violently assaulted by the Black Smoke monster and expires from his injuries shortly thereafter. Number 9, Jeffrey Damon, The Walking Dead. Actor Jeffrey DeMunn, who played fan-favourite character Dale on The Walking Dead, has been a regular collaborator with its first season showrunner, Frank Darabond. Appearing in his films The Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, The Majestic, and The Mist. Despite a hugely successful first season, Frank argued with AMC over the second season's episode order and budget, eventually prompting him to walk and file a still ongoing lawsuit. With his departure, DeMunn also decided to quit. He said, quote, Dale's death was my decision. I was furious about how Frank was pushed out of the show. I spent a week not being able to take a full breath, and then I realised, oh, I can quit. Dale is killed midway through the second season, being ripped apart by a walker and then eventually put out of his misery with a bullet to the head by Daryl. Number 8, Denise Crosby, Star Trek The Next Generation. Denise Crosby played the Enterprise's Chief of Security, Tasha Yar, in the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation, but requested to be killed off at the end of the season after expressing dissatisfaction with her character's minimal character development. Crosby said, quote, I was miserable, I couldn't wait to get off that show. I was dying. This was not an overnight decision. I was grateful to have made that many episodes, but I didn't want to spend the next six years years going aye aye captain and standing there in the same uniform in the same position on the bridge. While Yar is on manoeuvres on a remote planet, she's attacked by an alien entity known as Armus, who kills her instantly with a psychokinetic blast. Yar's death remains disdained by most fans to this day, with fair reason. Number 7, Dan Stevens, Downton Abbey. After spending three seasons on the hit period drama series Downton Abbey, Dan Stevens decided he wanted to venture off to explore stage and screen opportunities, and so asked for his popular Matthew Crawley to be written out. But the focal nature of his character, centred around his pivotal relationship with Lady Mary, left series creator Julian Fellows with no other choice but to kill Matthew off, because there was no other conceivable scenario where the two would be realistically separated indefinitely. So in the third season's Christmas special episode, Matthew is killed in a car accident mere moments after meeting his newborn son, in a move that infuriated the vast majority of the show's fanbase. Number 6, Eric Balfour, 24. Eric Balfour appeared on 24's first season as a fan-favourite, snack-loving techie Milo Pressman, but to the frustration of many, his role proved rather short-lived. Balfour made a triumphant return for the show's sixth season, however, with Milo now a fully-minted counter-terrorist unit employee, allowing Balfour a more expanded role across the entire season. But Balfour ended up asking the writers to off him near the end of season six for two reasons. Firstly, in his own words, quote, I got an offer to do a CBS cop show that sounded really exciting, and I felt it was a golden opportunity. This was in conjunction with him knowing ahead of time that CTU would be disbanded in season seven, meaning his role would likely have been substantially reduced anyway. Milo ends up sacrificing himself to save the life of his boss, Nadia, when Chinese mercenaries attack CTU. 
They ask the head of CTU to come forward, and before Nadia can do anything, Milo ends up taking her place, catching a bullet in the head for his troubles. Number 5. Christopher Eccleston, Doctor Who Despite the positive critical and fan response to Christopher Eccleston's role as 2005's rebooted Doctor Who, the actor was ultimately deeply unhappy playing the Time Lord due to disagreements with his bosses, including showrunner Russell T. Davies. He said, My relationship with my three immediate superiors, the showrunner, the producer, and co-producer, broke down irreparably during the first block of filming and it never recovered. They lost trust in me and I lost faith and trust and belief in them. Some of my anger about the situation came from my own insecurity. They employed somebody who was not a natural light comedian. Eccleston ended up asking for his release after just a single season, and as even the most casual Doctor Who fan knows, when a Doctor exits the show, they're inevitably asking for the customary death by regeneration, allowing a seamless recast. The Doctor sacrifices himself to save the life of his companion Rose, absorbing the force of a time vortex which causes him to regenerate into the 10th Doctor. Given that Tennant ended up giving fans arguably the greatest Doctor of all time, it's probably fair to say that things work out for the best. Number 4. Sophie Turner, Game of Thrones Back in a 2016 interview, Sophie Turner insisted that she wanted her Game of Thrones character Sansa Stark to be given one of the show's legendary death scenes. She said, quote, I don't want to survive and I want Littlefinger to end up on the throne. I think if you're on Game of Thrones and you don't have a cool death scene, then what's the point? I think it'd be really disappointing if I got to the end and I was just okay. Unlike most of the actors on this list, Turner's motivation to die wasn't born out of a desire to move on from the show, but to receive a fate she felt was best befitting her character. However, if you've seen Thrones' final season, you'll know that this didn't actually happen. Much to Turner's presumed disappointment, Sansa stuck it out all the way to the end, avoiding a grim fate and returning home to Winterfell, where she was crowned Queen in the North. Number 3. Dean Norris, Breaking Bad Walter White's DEA agent brother-in-law Hank Schrader was unquestionably one of the best and most unexpectedly nuanced characters on Breaking Bad. Yet despite the show's popularity, Norris ended up asking creator Vince Gilligan to kill him earlier than scheduled. As it turned out, Norris had already booked a role on a comedy series, Pilot, before AMC decided to split Breaking Bad's fifth season into two batches of eight episodes spread over two years. Despite Norris's request to die mid-season, Gilligan insisted he needed to keep him around for an additional six episodes. Norris said, quote, At some point, f whoever decided they were going to split it into two eighths. So it cut me off from doing a pilot, and I had a pilot I really wanted to do. Hank ends up dying in the show's third to last episode, the legendary Ozzie Mandias, where white supremacist gangster Jack Welker executes him after he refuses to drop the drug investigation. Number 2. Jessalyn Gilsig, Vikings TV veteran Jessica Gilsig played Siggy on Vikings, but after spending two years shooting in Ireland away from her family, she decided she was done with the show and asked creator Michael Hurst to kill her off, which he did midway through the show's third season. Gilsig said, quote, In truth, I told them I had some personal things in my life that I needed to be there for, some family things which everybody has sometimes. So I approached Michael Hurst and said that it wasn't going to be possible for me to continue living overseas in Ireland, and it was time for me to move on. He was incredible about it. It was really sad and difficult and an incredibly hard decision, as you can imagine. Siggy jumps into an ice lake to rescue the children of Ragnar, ultimately allowing herself to drown and head to Valhalla after witnessing a vision of her dead daughter, Theory. Although Siggy's demise came as a rather shocking surprise for fans, it was ultimately a fitting end for the character, completing her arc in a compelling and emotionally satisfying way. Number 1. John Deal, Miami Vice John Deal played the fan-favorite goofball role of Detective Lawrence on Miami Vice for two full seasons, after which he requested to be offed for two reasons. He was sick of living in Miami to shoot the show, and he wanted to return to stage acting. Deal earned more than $200,000 for his work on the show's second season, but desperately sought greater artistic fulfillment elsewhere. He said of the bold move, quote, I learned a lot during Vice, but I didn't really feel I could go any further, the way they were writing for the character. I read somewhere that unless you do something different every 18 months, change your career. Scare yourself, you're not growing. I needed to keep growing. 
He ends up killed halfway through the show's third season, when an undercover mission goes wrong and he gets injected with a fatal overdose of cocaine at the order of drug smuggler Oswaldo Guzman. And there you have it folks, 10 actors who begged for their TV characters to die. Drop this video a like if you enjoyed it and feel free to hit me up on Twitter at youslidedogu. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out and I'll see you next time.